Hi guys, hope you're good since last video. So the introduction is gonna be very short. Please like and subscribe. In this video, we're gonna see hash maps, vectors, arrays in the first part. And after, in the hands end, we're gonna see iterators. Let's get started. Hash maps. So in Python, we're going to compare between Python and Rust for that. So in Python, dictionaries can store mixed types without explicit type declaration. I'm going to fast forward this part to get uh, the table. So here you can see the methods. And we will be able to compare with hash maps which are the equivalent in uh, Rust. So hash maps have a key and the value it requires specifying the types for both the key k and the value type. Method comparison. And here we will be able to see the different methods in both languages. So to create, insert, get a value check key list, check that the key exists, remove and iterate. So here, for example, to create, we use curly braces. Well, here we're going to use hash map, double colon, new, like for strings, when we're creating the strings or the vectors. To insert, we have different methods, insert for insert, get to get the value, contents key to check the key, if it exists, remove. And here, when we do a for loop, 4k v int ampersand map. So here, map is the name of the hash map. It's mutable. So that we can do all those operations. So those are the equivalent in Python. You can pause the video and read it. So we're going to just check different examples. For the get method, for example, here in Rust, it's going to return an option. So some ampersand value if the key exists or none, if not. So you need to use the standard library in the collection hash map. So you need to import it, otherwise you can't use it straight away, like you're using strings or vectors. So this one here, you will need to import it after mutable map. Create the map. It's a new one. There's nothing in. And after we're going to do some insertions. We're going to insert the key A with a value. Then now it is inferred that those are ints. And here we have um, string literals. If let some ampersand value, so we can we check here to return the value. So the map is going to check the key, and we get the key back. Otherwise, it's going to return none. So if you want to return an error, you will need to wrap it maybe in a result. In Python, we have here the dictionary created. So in diction the dictionaries in Python they are different because uh, here you just uh, put curly braces, you put the key, colon, and you put uh, the value. The method is uh, to get it. So here we did an insert just to create it at the beginning, but to get this is the same method. And after here we use a if statement if value. Is not done. We're gonna print it. We're gonna check another example with a contains key method in Rust. We check if a key exists in the hash map. So here we get the key. Here we just check if it exists. If map contains key A and we print it. So we use the method directly. The if statement and here in Python 
if a in map will print. So it's a bit equivalent. Just here we have um, we have a method for that. I'm gonna jump straight away into the vectors. Just before going into the vectors for the hash maps, I need to know that uh, in Python, um, in a dictionary, you can have different types. You can mix up the types. While in uh, Rust, you can't do that. So all the keys will have the same type and all the values will have the same types. Vectors. Rust vector type requires specifying the type of element T in the vector. Dynamic arrays are not like, uh, they're not the same. So the vector here is dynamic. It's same as an array, dynamic. But it's not the same because there is no n. So it's not a fixed value. It can grow, it can shrink. In Python, list can store mixed type of uh, type without uh, explicit type declaration. So same as uh, for the hash map for Python or the dictionary. I mean the dictionary for Python. Let's just uh, put here the table, compare both. So we have Python this side and uh, we have Rust in this side this time. It's inverted to create to create these values, to add elements, get elements, remove, check the lens, and iterate. Let's so see, for example, to check the lens here, we have the method lens. And here we have lens. Here it's a dot lens, so we don't put anything inside the method. When in Python, we're going to put the variable inside the method. We have pop. They're the same. Here is going to raise an error if it is empty. So this returns an option. This one returns an option of type it's the reference ampersand sum push push here. Yeah. Here we use push for the vectors, but you have seen that we use also push underscore str in the previous examples that we've seen in the, the different videos. And here we have the append, which is the equivalent in the other side. This is a way to create a vector. Here in Python, we just put the braces, empty ones, that's an empty vector. So that's the equivalent in Python of vector, of a list, it's a vector in, uh, in Rust. You can pause the video and check that again. I'm going to jump to the examples straight away. Just some few examples to see the code written. Example of uh, key methods, create a vector list, or a list, so Rust. Here we use uh, the mute keyword vector, we create a new vector, it's empty. And after here we add the values. We, had, we, we have uh, created another vector that having values in, so empty, one having values. One in Python, empty is just the braces, empty. Well, here you put the values in the, in the braces. To add an element, we use push, push versus append. So here we use push in um, Rust. Well, here we're going to use append. And here we're just going to check get versus index access. So in Rust, it returns an option of type ampersand type. So ampersand sum, which is the ampersand sum value if the index is valid or none. So if out of the bound, it's going to return none. If uh, let some value equal vect dot get value, so we're trying to get it, and we print it. So we do the evaluation here after we print it here. Otherwise, it's going to return none. While in Python, it's going to return an error. So we just wrap it here between a try accept. Let's see the arrays. What about the arrays? So rest arrays, fixed size, known at compile time. So we've seen 
in the previous video talking about the stock and the hip. So arrays on the stock, they fixed. Once an array is created, its size cannot change. When in Python, we can uh, talk about list here, dynamic size. But this is more linked to the vector that we've seen before, allows adding or removing elements. I haven't found the, the equivalent in Python, so that's why I'm talking about numphy. So I found that numphy array is the closest to what we have in Rust. So similar to Rust arrays, in that uh, they have they are fixed, fixed size after creation. Let's uh, fast forward this. So here we have different uh, features, type of declaration, fixed size, dynamic, resizing, element type, the size in the memory, the allocation. For example, here it's allocated in the stack, while in numphy is allocated in the heap. Index access, initialization with values, zero initialization. Well, here we use np0, the method, numeric computation, limited, here is highly optimized, multidimensional support, so this is just a 1D array, well, here it's n arrays, slicing, limited, fully slicing support, and after you can also check the rest, which is uh, very explanatory. Stack allocation for arrays. So we have here the type and the n number. So the type tn represents an array with elements of type t on the fixed length n. So it's a fixed length. Stack allocation when you declare an array with a fixed sized u64 tree for example it's allocated on the stack provided its size is not too large to exceed the stack capacity as we've seen in the previous video with a heap and stack so in the stack you can get the stack overflow so you have to be careful with that stack is used for data that has a known fixed size at compile time making array t type and n the fixed size, ideal for stack allocation. And here we have a little example just to show you here how we declare an array. So you just use the braces and you put here a semicolon between the type and n number. So here we have five numbers of type U64, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which puts those five numbers and we can print them with the debugger mode. Here are numbers in an array of five elements. So here it's I32, but it's not it's U64. So it's all right. Since uh, size is known at compile time, it's uh, allocated on the stack. So you already know that, but uh, I haven't showed you how to declare those. So here is how we're gonna declare it. We might use it uh, in the second part when we're doing the hands-on. So there are some limitations. So you know those limitations. We don't want to get the stack overflows. So the size limitation, the stack has a limited size, typically one, uh, we've seen one megabyte to eight megabyte, depending if it is a window, Windows system or Linux and Mac OS. So if the array is too large, it's gonna create a stack overflow. After we have the dynamic arrays, which are on the hips, that's what we have seen uh, before, which are the vectors, the heap allocated. So unlike the arrays, they can grow and shrink at the runtime, time, which is why it's allocated on the heap, where memory can be dynamically managed. You get another example just to compare both. So here is not I32. Just tell to yourself I'm uh, talking about U64. It's, just, uh, it's also int, so it's fine. Okay. All right. So now let's go and see on the terminal. I'm gonna use the example of uh, gonna use vectors. Just focus on those, and um, the foc I mean just use vectors to focus on the iterators. So the subject, it's iterators. And, uh, this was just an introduction to show you the 
the different types that you have called in the first video of this uh, playlist stores so vectors, arrays and hash maps ok, we're in the terminal let's see, that's what we have done uh, last time and now we're going to create our file just an easy name, loops dot rs so we, we are going to comment a lot in this part um, so be ready to post the video sometimes because there are some uh, different things to understand that we haven't seen before that's why we're seeing loops with uh, those types arrays vectors and hash map so we're going to use vectors that's our, the plan but we might use also hash maps and also arrays so we want to focus on different ways to loop over those types okay let's close those comments we're gonna put everything in a pub public function and we're gonna go through different ways so loop ways we're gonna do those examples step by step we're gonna go through different errors that you can encounter even the typo errors <laughs> so pub loop ways is gonna return a vector u64 with type of uh, int and sign so only positive ints this will be returned just gonna say this will be our returned vector and let's create it I'm gonna create a mutable vector because we want this vector to be stretched to uh, add values to it let mute super vector of type vect u64 we declare it like that so when we return it we are sure to get a vector of u64 the first way dot eta So we have created our super vector empty vector. Now we're gonna build up an example. For each example, I'm gonna tell you for which kind of uh, type it is. So this is a uh, fine. You can use dot eater for vectors, hash maps, and arrays. We're gonna create our variable here. We're gonna go in Japan again let people count in Komazawa the vector of type u64 we use the macro vect vec to create this vector and after here we're just gonna align different numbers 98, 23, 67, 124, 31, 18, 96, 97, maybe 44 and 20. So we got maybe here I'll put a big number 306 and 109. Let's iterate. So we're going to start using our loops. So this is the first loop. And then we're going to comment a bit. So I'm going to create the loop. And I'm going to make it evolve with uh, my comments. I'm going to loop over this variable. So for people count in people count in Kamazawa dot writer 
on here we put the curly braces if people count is bigger than 50 we use the curly braces again and after we're going to put here we're going to push those variables into our empty vector super vector that push and here we put people count Okay. Okay, so I, I know how I'm going to do that. Um, let's just say so we could have used the more direct way. Here we are looking at the methods, so we work on dot iter, but uh, you could have uh, just iterated through using doing a for. I'm just going to write it here. That's the line that we could have used with a uh, percent in front of the variable name, and after do a condition inside. That's a direct way to do it. Here, when we use that iter, it is using the ampersand, so it's getting those variable references. So here we're working with references when we're using that iter under the hood. Let's get some more space. So for people count in people count underscore comments of our ETA, that's the one we use. We use the ETA on this variable. Let's get in the reference values under the hood. So we could have used this one here. But that's the same here when we use that ETA. And we're going to go through those numbers, get in the ampersand of those numbers. So here we need to evaluate it. I'm explaining it, I'm explaining you like that because I want you to, to understand why I'm gonna change some parts of this loop. So it's people count, it's not people first. There were a typo. People count, we evaluate, and after we're gonna use the super vector and push those variable in this mutable vector, and we push, we're gonna push people count. And we get the U64. But as I told you, it's using an ampersand of those numbers. So in order to push uh, to push those numbers in the new vector, we uh, we need to transform them. Just let me explain. We're gonna add a comment here on the top. Let me close those comments. It is not done yet. We go step by step. People count. Is. Actually. An ampersand people count. Okay. Here we're going to see when we uh, borrow those variables, we can evaluate, can evaluate it with a counterpart, which is another ampersand variable. So you 
can compare it like that. That's one way of doing it. Therefore, another ampersand U64. That's the type. Or use the star. So when you're using the star, you can evaluate. You can evaluate it and compare. You can compare it to a U64 directly. So here we have two solutions. Or we put a star on people count. Or we put an ampersand on a 50. If we put ampersand on 50, we get people count, which is already an ampersand compared to ampersand 50. Or if we put a star, you can just keep it like that star compared to 50. Because the star is going to dereference that variable and get the value behind it. So the pointer will be uh, just dereferenced. This way, people count ampersand u64. So when we use the star, is dereferenced. I would say I'm just gonna say it in another way. Is just showing the real value, the value behind the pointer. So we could have used instead. Just gonna write it how we could have used it the other way. People count, and here we put a ampersand on the 50. That's another way to do it. So they both are the same type. Ampersand U64. Or they both ampersand U64, or you use the star to have both to be uh, U64 only. So here I'm uh, using the star on top of uh, People count. So when it goes through that iter, it's going to become an ampersand people count. You use the star to do this uh, kind of calculation, evaluation, if it is bigger than the 50. And after that, you will be able to push it uh, in the vector. So same when you push it here in the vector, you can't push people count as it is. You need uh, to push the value. That's what we want to put in the vector. So this is playing with borrowing, owning, referencing. So you do it what best suits you. Do what you want, what you prefer. And here we're just going to add a little uh, start so that we get the value pushed in the vector. That is why here we use the magic start is going to be differencing the pointer. And get the value. Which is a type U64 now, because we use the star. That it is pointing to. So we pass from. I'm repeating a lot, but um, it can be a bit uh, confusing. 
So I hope that you understood what, uh, what, uh, what I mean here. That you have two ways of doing it. A percent people count. So we pass here from percent people count to uh, just people count. So there's no more reference. Just uh, think at the type of it. So from ampersand uh, u64, which is going through the loop because of iter. So iter is going to through the values. It's going to change them into reference of those values. We use the star to get uh, the actual value behind it. Not we don't want the reference. And after we push that actual value when uh, it's true, when it's uh, bigger than 50 here. That's what we evaluate. Okay, that iter people count is an percent uh, u60 or here we get it back to an unsigned integer it's not not anymore a reference to evaluate with 50 and after we push the same here on the value that's what we want to push in our empty vector super vector Okay, so we are done with those explanations. We can now return the vector result. So our mutable vector now has the results of this evaluation. Super vector, that's how we're going to call it. That's what it is called actually. Can do here print ln so that we can see those uh, initial values on the terminal and after we're going to be able to compare with the results i suggest you to do it at the same time doing it at least once will help you to understand what's going on and you try different combinations to see what the compiler says hope I didn't forget any uh, semicolon so here do we need semicolon we don't need I put one just uh, to show you that it's gonna work but we don't need semicolon here in the next examples I'm not gonna put semicolon after the fall so loop ways let's go to main we're gonna call it we need uh, to import the module loops loops that's how we called it okay and after here we put the function and it's the other way around so it's not the module loop ways it's the module loop the function loop ways so i'm just going to change it okay now we're good we're ready to build Let's go and build that cargo run. Okay, and we got our results. All the values above 50. That's perfect. Let's go back in. So I'm going to use the same super vector. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to comment it out here. And now it's time for the second way. Dot iter mute. So this one is not available for all those uh, collections. So the second way is dot iter which is available for vectors and hash maps 
So here you, you see there is mute and you know that arrays are fixed size, so they're not mutable. So for sure we can't use this one on those. Vectors and hash maps are okay. We can uh, modify those as they are. They are on the heap. We define the, an hash map. So hash map is uh, equi equivalent of uh, Python dictionaries. It's defined uh, not uh, the same way, but that's the equi equivalent of a dictionary. So we're going to use here arrays. I'm just showing you here how it is modeled you're going to be uh, defining it, creating one, you need to use tuples of key values inside those brackets. Okay. So let's use this model on the create our, our hash map. So we haven't used any hash map since the beginning. That's why in this video we're explaining it and we're using it during this uh, loop iteration explanation. So we use the mute keyword, it's a mutable. People count in Setagaya, which is another neighbor of Tokyo. Hash map with uh, strings has keys and u64 has values equal hash map from so same as when we create string for example we say string from or vector we say vect from here it's hash map from and inside we're going to be using the formatting that we've seen uh, with the brackets So brackets and tuples of key values. I'm just going to format it and after I'm going to copy. So the first one is going to be a string. Okay. So we need how many of them I'm going to put? One, two, three, four, maybe one more. Let me do the weak days. So I'm going to use seven of those for each day of the week. So Monday with a count. So Monday there were 39 people in Setagaya, which is not a lot. Wednesday, so Tuesday 54, Wednesday 109, Thursday we got how many? Three. Friday was 1290 and we keep going like that we're gonna add those key pairs but we still need to uh, format those uh, strings because here we have string literals at the moment so it's not of type strings ampersand string and now we transform it to string so we need a string here. Let me just copy with the point. Okay, and apply it to all the other ones. That's good. You should be able to follow along while I'm doing that. I could have fast forwarded this part. 
I'm just going to keep it raw. After the, the videos, they have an option to, to uh, accelerate the, the play speed. So we'll use those options appropriately. Here we got our variable defined. That's our first hash map defined in the whole series. Here we go. And now we are going to unwrap that. So I say unwrap, but we're gonna actually just follow up on the keys and values. So it's like KV, but here I replace KV by day and count. In people, count in Cetegaia dot, I use the method iter underscore mute. And after in your function, you can use those uh, names like day count just to refer of uh, the type of keys that you have and the values to make the code, uh, the code uh, easy to read for someone else. If they contains an R, we want to push it to a super vector. Okay, so for days, we have the days here, count the values in the mutable hash map, iter mute. So we just work on the days. We're going to check using the method that's already available in Rust, contains R, so that's string literal. And after we're going to push the value count in our super vector. And after at the end, we're going to just return the super vector. So I'm not going to put here the semicolon. You see here I put a semicolon. I'm going to get rid of it. So here, let's get rid of it. We're going to see if it's going to work. Super vector. This is our return uh, vector. But is it going to work like that? You tell me. I'm going to comment to explain. Here, what are the type of day and count? Before I tell you, can you guess? Day and count will be references. So you see there's something wrong about this uh, for loop because uh, we're using references. So try to guess what we should do. Therefore, we got an ampersand day, so an ampersand string and an ampersand u64 for the days. Okay, count. For the count, sorry. So for the values, ampersand count, and for the keys, ampersand day. That's what's behind it. There are references. Why there are the references is because of iter mute. It's doing the same as a iter. It's just going to get the references, keys, and values of the hash map. We use again start here to get the value. So that was the answer. And a different the the reference. I wrote difference, but it's okay. The pointer. So end count. And we're gonna get the value behind it. Okay. Let me close this. So you not be you won't be scared now to see uh, stars in, uh, in the code. So here we get the hash map. We created an hash map. We get the uh, key values. We use iter mute, which is mutable. Hash map is going to be able to iter through. And we're pushing. Let's add the magic start here. The values. 
be good. Let's go and try our first cargo run, hoping that there's no errors. Oh, what's happened? Oh yes, I see. So can you see here? What do we need? We've seen in the first part of the video, that's when you're using a hash map, not found in this scope. So you need to import it. It's not available like the strings or the vectors. You need to import it from a, the standard library. So let me comment here. Hash maps need to be imported as we have seen in the explanation part. So you use standard library in the collections and you get the hash map. Okay. Let's close this comment. So we should be able to run it now. That's perfect. We got it here. So we got those numbers which are 1290, 5949 and 3. And let's go and see here the third way now. Just jump to it straight away. I've commented out the second way that we've used. Into ITER is a special one, this one. It is available for vectors and arrays. It's not available for hash maps. This one is a bit special. So um, let's see this. Let's declare an array. So now we're going to play with the array. That's the first array that we use in the series. So let's see how it's going to work out. So that we see all types. So when I'm using those types, I'm trying to refer to Python and see what I might need. I haven't read the book, the, the rest book. I'm just going through what I need and making those videos through and keep learning like that. So eight best restaurants capacity. Let's put in an array uh, restaurant capacities. There will be just eight restaurants as it's a fixed size. Let I'm gonna call the variable Shibuya eight udon restaurant capacity. Udon is like a ramen, but it's a bigger, it's a bigger size. It's a U64. We put the semicolon, so this array is going to hold U64 variables, and there will be eight variables. So here we're just going to be uh, putting those variables in the in the array. 37, 324, 33, 432, 56, 12, 7, 76, and 49. Okay, this is done. Let me close those comments. And after, do you know what we're going to do? Let's print this. I forget to print in the the one before, just to have a comparison from what we got initially. So use the debug mode to print uh, this array. I'm not sure that I need the debug mode, but I just put it. And here, okay. And now we can start what we are trying to show here into ITER. Why is it so special? Here into get some space. 
Donc, on va à tard. It's different from the other ones. Okay. In terms of borrowing, owning, referencing, opening, referencing. So in that game, in that life of a Rust uh, borrowing, owning, and stuff that we don't have in a Python, that don't we don't manage in Python, but it's under the hood. So iter into this method moves the ownership. Yes, that's what is special about it. So the ownership here is going to be moved. Therefore. No references, no percent. Let's do a for loop. So that's the easiest for loop that we're gonna see. For capacity in Shibuya, it would then restaurant capacity dot into a writer. So int writer here is not creating an ampersand. That's why we can use, we can, I mean, use a calculation or we can use here an evaluation of capacity directly because it's an own value. So if capacity is even, so, Modulo 2 equal to 0, we just push it to the vector. We don't need any star here. I'm just going to comment on that. Here, capacity is owned. It's not an ampersand capacity, so it's an actual U64 type. That's why we can evaluate it directly without any manipulation. Therefore, we don't need the magic start. Not ampersand, the start. As no pointer. So there's no pointer to the reference here. So we are working 100% here with owned variable moved from here to there. Still moved. Okay, let's close this. And now we are ready to uh, return our variable, super vector, as usual. We got our variable, is an array, u64, there's eight values in, it's fixed size, it's on the stack, we can change it, but we can iterate over it. Capacity, it's owned, that's why we can do the evaluation directly on it. And we push that variable into the vector. Let's build this. Okay. I got a warning also. So I got an error because I forgot the semicolon. But I got a warning for a new import. Because we have imported HMAP, but we're not using HMAP. I have a commented out the hash map that we use. We can use this decorator here. Allow unused imports. So we get a clean 
uh, terminal print. And here I'm just going to add the semicolon that I always forget. I told you at the first in the first video, that's why I just I should just put it everywhere. Here we go. So we get the initial array. And we get the vector return here with the uh, even numbers. So here I'm going to let you see the commenting moment. Just going to comment out this example. We might take a break. So eat well and uh, come back for the next part. Please like and subscribe. Way function rest methods, you can get a toilet break if you want because it's uh, you can pause the video if you want because this one is the is the most interesting one, is the one which is gonna last the longest, also. And you need to be in front of the screen to see all the details of it, do not miss a piece, it's very important, otherwise, you're not gonna understand what's going on. The fourth way looping in a function way. So we're going to use methods which are available in Rust and uh, we're going to play with those methods. You're going to be introduced to uh, one concept that we haven't seen yet. We're going to see it in the future videos but uh, we need to uh, pass through this uh, example here. We're going to introduce it here and I'm going to tell you what's the equ equivalent in Python, so you'll be able to, to still understand what's going on. So we're going to use a mutable variable. We're going to use hash maps again. So Japan travel rating. Same types. String for the keys. New 64 for the values. We're going to create our hash map. I'm going to try to, to make it this hash map not too long. Okay. And here we put the, the array. And now we can start doing our key values. Just in that Gonna push it a bit. Yes, here. Okay. I might need also the two string. Perfect. Just copy this. One, two, three. How many I'm gonna put? Four, five. I think it's okay. To put more. Five. And now we are going to just fill it with uh, the keys and the values. So let's start with the keys. Different years, 2005. Different travel to Japan. Different rating, 2007. 2008. 2014 and the last one this year 2024 so the rating this one we say it's 120 2005 2007 is going to be 0 2008 50 2014 110 2024 300 I'm just going to give here the scale, how it is rated. 100 is the top, <laughs> top rating. And uh, 0, I mean, I mean 0. I put O, but I mean 0. It's the worst. Okay. I close this. So this was the easiest part of this uh, false way, just to create this um, hash map. 
there will be comments so i'm going to explain step by step we're going to do our print because we want to see this one printed just let me use the debug mode it's not well formatted here okay colon okay now we get the string let's get the japan travel rating variable Forgot the J. Let me put the J first here. I'm just past. Okay. Now we create a variable. Let was pick troublesome years which is a type hash map which is holding strings on u64 okay, this one is equal to so this variable is going to hold the the iteration that we're going to do that's the thing here and uh, the first function, the first method that we're using is dot iter. So just let me see how I'm going to present it. So basically what we're going to do here, we're going to be piling up a bunch of functions to, uh, to get this iteration done, just using functions. put here the functions, the other ones, so I can put those like that, it's a steel chaining with the other one, with the iter, so after iter we're going to do a dot filter, after filter we're going to do something else, I'm going to show it after, and at the end we're going to do dot collection, so between filter and collection there will be another method, there are different ways, that's why I'm just going to be using one way and explaining the other. So, we're ready for this one. So, be careful about the details. Which makes it fun. I think I can put... I can put it here also. That's better. So we got the variable. We know what's the name of the variable. And uh, we're going to use dot iter on it. It's going to iterate through those variable. Filter. We're going to do an operation. So we're going to do something inside here, which is going to be selecting those variables that we want and collect. Also, we're going to use it at the end. There will be a, another one that I'm going to introduce in the middle. So the variable here was big troublesome year is an HMAP string. The type is string U64. So we don't need a star. The need, we won't need to use any start here. because and that's when i'm gonna start explaining so here what's happened with that iter as we've seen before in the previous example so the first example that we've used it's gonna get the references of those values okay of those keys and those uh, values which are composing those tuples Okay, so the keys can't be changed. Only the values can be changed in a hash map. 
just to let you know about that. Now here, dot filter after having done the iteration, we got those references. The method dot filter does the same by also referencing. So here it's kind of a double referencing. If you want to just understand how it goes here, I'm going to just write it down by also referencing to the reference created by dot iter. Therefore, here we have a double referencing. So under the hood, that's what's going on. We get one reference from dot iter, and after the filter is going to also get a reference. So it's like having a end end, so ampersand percent value ampersand ampersand key but let's see here i'm just gonna write but when using closures so that's what i'm gonna introduce you to we're gonna see this in uh, i'm gonna use those in the future so but here in inside dot filter we're going to use what is called in rust closures and when we use those closures so when using closures what's going on is that uh, rust will be able just going to write it so rust will be able to automatically the reference one layer okay so it was before ampersand ampersand v ampersand ampersand k because it passed through iter iter get a reference filter get another reference but uh, rest is gonna just uh, fix that that's why when you're using the closures, you just use. So that's what we're going to get in the closure. The key is going to be the reference of a key. And the value is going to be the reference of a value. At the filter level. So that simplifies uh, the processing because when we're coding, um, we'll be able to just use the reference ampersand by adding ampersand when we want to use it. So here, let me uh, just uh, create this uh, filter Maybe I'm going to tell you what's the equivalent of this in Python. That you can tell in your mind, ah, oh, this is like, okay, I understand. So here we got year and rate, which is a key value. The rate, we're going to make an operation on it. We're going to do an evaluation. An evaluate that is under 51. Okay, so now you know. That's when we evaluate, we need uh, the actual value. That's why we use the star in the other iterations. But here we don't need start. And the closure, so the syntax we're using here, is like in Python when you're using lambda. 
for the lambda function. You know how you how you put this variable and after you do operations on that variable. That's the same here. Okay, so here we got this variable, which is a mutable hash map. Okay, the values are passing through. So we're going to define here a variable is going to hold it, hold the result, iteration, and after we do this filtering, getting the key here and the rate value, which is going to be those types, the reference the keys and the values, okay? And the between parentheses, because uh, they are tuple, we have to pass a tuple here, it is an hash map. So keys can't be changed, only values are mutable. Okay, so this is also important to know. So there will be a lot of uh, little details like that. So here for year I can put an underscore just to say that I'm not going to use it and here we put an ampersand because it's the it's an ampersand that we're using and the reference so the key can be changed but the reference we can alter it and here we play with that value that we're going to evaluate that is under 51. Okay, so we don't need here a percent because we can't we can't check on the reference. We check on the value itself. It has been different they referenced by the closure. So the fact that we are writing this kind of lambda function inside filter is de referencing. Uh, the rate. That's why I can write rate directly. So if it was a vector, so here we're using a um, hash map. But if it was a vector, we could have used a method called dot cloned. So that's for vectors. Mm, so maybe this comment, I don't need to put it here. I'm going to move it because I'm going to now talk. So let me just finish writing, which could have the referenced. One layer. So between filter and collect, I'm going to put a new method. That's the one I told you I'm going to explain you after. I'm going to put it here and I'm going to move my comment here also. The comment that I did with the vector. So here we're using map. I believe that this function exists in other languages, like maybe JavaScript. So here we're going to map and use also a closure inside map. So we did iteration, we got a reference. We did filter, we got a second reference, it's a double reference. Inside filter, we're using a closure. Rust knows how to dereference, de so it's going to simplify it. At the end, when we exit filter, we get a, a reference of those values. Okay? And after, when we go inside map, we need to uh, clone the year, which is the key, to get its actual value. And for the, for the rate, we don't need to do anything because the um, closure is going to be dereferencing it. So Rust knows how to dereference it. That's why we can return a tuple 
year dot clone comma rate directly i put my comment here because if it was a vector that's where you you would have put the cloned method for the vector so here because it's a hash map we're using map method if it was a vector you would have used cloned instead all right so but for hash map we need to map it okay so why we don't use cloned for hash map isn't it the same no it's not the same so here it is to be able to to clone So I'm going to say, I'm going to say it. So we, we want to be able to clone also, to get the value of the year. Because uh, when we, uh, when we, uh, when we exit filter, the filter level, where is the method, the key is still a, a reference, still an ampersand k. We still have an ampersand v returned, so that's what is returned by a filter. Okay, that's the types. After the, as I told you, the closure for the value, it can get rid of the ampersand. It's gonna do it automatically. Rust can do it, and for the year, we're using the method here dot clone. To be able to uh, get uh, rid of that uh, ampersand, that value. To uh, dereference the pointer. So if you have used instead of map, if you have used clone on hash map, it wouldn't work. Just gonna write it here like that. Because ampersand string and ampersand u64, they're not the actual value. Because the dot clone can only uh, play with the. Okay, we would need some transformation to values. And you know that the key, you can't modify it. So just don't. Don't do it for hash maps. Okay, don't do that. So hash map, hash map, you use map, and for vectors you use clone of the filter. One, two, three, four functions. Iter, filter, and after we map, and after we collect. Or manually uh, let me just say conversion directly so converting that's the operation that we're doing here just to resume it ampersand key ampersand v to key value but it's still a tuple Okay, just get a tuple. Year ampersand key. Okay. Filter here. We don't need to use year, so we put the underscore. It's an ampersand key also because of either, which has change it to a double ampersand key but after one layer have been uh, dereferenced okay so when using closure on rest automatically dereference one layer so one layer has been dereferenced because of this 
close your hair. 10% rate inside. 10% rate. I mean value. And here we use the actual reference. We get rid of the reference and we use the actual value. Rust understand and know how to do it. When we exit filter, we get a tuple with the references, keys and values. And we're converting it to key value using the map function. Here, year and rate, we're going to do some operation on year. On rate, we're going to dereference it. That's how we unwrap everything. We don't need the start okay, for rate. No need a magic start. Okay, I said it at the beginning because we won't need the start because of all this. <laughs> okay. We're almost done. We need one last explanation. I'm just going to close those comments because at the end we are going to let me close this. Okay, now it's cleaner. We can see what's going on. Any comment here? No, no comments. Now we are not done yet. We're almost there. Let's now get rid of those troublesome years in Japan. So we're going to create a variable called troublesome years. This variable it's going to be taking worse, big troublesome year, the iteration that we've done now. So we got the result after the dot collect, which is going to be collecting into a hash map. So it's going to be creating the hash map of the result with those key value pairs. And here we're going to call the keys function method just to get those keys. So when we get those keys, we get the reference of those keys. So you can you can get only the keys if you want. This is the same method that we use in Python.keys. Clone. So here we want to get rid of those pointers. We get uh, the value. But after, what are we going to do with those values? That's when it's interesting here. Because we haven't defined troublesome year. What type it is. So it's going to derive its type from a worse, big troublesome year or not? Or can we do something different? So here we're going to explain a little bit what we're going to do to solve this, uh, this man manipulation uh, issue. So we get all keys with dot key, dot keys method. I'm going to say end want to make a vector. That's interesting. So we're passing in an hash map. Okay. And we want to make a vector. Here, 
the type will be vect so when you use the keys method on the hash map was big trouble some years you get a type vect percent string so getting those references of those values those keys which are present in the, that uh, new hash map and after that we can uh, loop over those references directly using the variable name so we will be able to use troublesome years directly when we do our for loop instead of using for values in ampersand troublesome years or for values in troublesome years dot iter so we don't need to use any reference of the values which are in that vector and here we put vect so here we could define, uh, we could say, for example, u64, but we're going to put an underscore. When you put an underscore like that, Rust is going to, it's going to be, it's going to infer the type. So here, underscore, I'm just going to explain it quickly with a comment in the vect. So vect underscore will let Rust infer the type of the value which is going to be collected after this. So in an hash map, all the keys have the same type. So here there is only one type possible to collect and Rust is going to be able to infer that, uh, that type. While in Python, you know, you can have a dictionary with uh, um, different uh, values and different keys. I mean, different key types. So if using dot map, for example, we could uh, use just dot map year and have to do the operation on year on a, from a that and do year dot clone instead of clone because after keys here I'm using clone I can use also map year and use a year dot clone the type we won't get the type that we want the type will be vector string Okay, which is a vect owned string. So it's not a reference of a string. So here we need to play with the references of strings. We can't be playing with the owned values. So at this time, if you want to do a for loop after that, you would need to uh, implement the ampersand. So to use the references because there are own values in the vector. Okay, that's uh, another way to do it. So here, the type that we want is a vector ampersand string. So that we can use the variable directly. And if you use dot map instead of a clone, 
we will get a, a vector string, which is an owned string, and we need to implement all the different things that we've seen before, the ampersand for the for loop, because after that I'm going to do a for loop. So here we use clone, we get the real values behind the pointer. And after the collect, it's going to be uh, collecting it into a... So let me... This... We have this... Let's close those comments. So this example is huge because we're doing a lot of manipulations. We're playing with different functions. In each function, we're doing uh, some uh, evaluations, calculations. So let's recap. We have a mutable Japan Travel Rating HMAP. We create another HMAP, which is going to loop through that variable. Iteration to get those references. We filter smaller than the 51, we use map to get those values back, and we collect. Same here, we want just the keys, we create a variable, we use was big trouble some years result, so that hash map that we got with these filtered values which are on the 51. We want just the keys, we use clone to get those values, same, and we collect here in the vector. With the vector returned, we expect it to be a vect and string. So the type will be I'm just gonna find where I'm just copy it. Here is the type. So you do what you want. If you want to return it like that, or if you want to use a dot map as I showed you in the comments before here to get the value back instead of a clone. And at this time, you'll get the own value. So when we're doing the for loop here, we will be able to not use ampersand because we get a vect ampersand string. So it's already a reference of a string. So now we can loop over and uh, clean up those uh, bad years out of out from our hash map. So going through this example, you'll be able to see those different types. I mean, those new uh, types hash map. That's the first time that we use it in this video. You'll be able to see the functions also to loop over it and uh, to be introduced to those closures. Closures, what looks like the Python, uh, how we call it, the Python uh, lambdas functions. Okay, we have a mutable Japan here. Let me just copy it. And now we're going to just loop over for year in troublesome years, which is already reference of those keys. It's a vector. Open travel rating, so the original mutable hash map. We get rid of those years. Okay, so here, same. I'm going to put here semicolon at the end, print it in. Let's print in the debug mode. Was troublesome years. Okay. So after is up to you to do a 
like uh, what I'm doing here and just play with it and see what's going on and uh, use different uh, examples and uh, make some uh, errors read the compiler, come back to it understand the logic, if you don't get it you copy it, you put it in uh, ChatGPT which is going to explain you and you come back to it, so you're going to be able to iterate and learn So we have a hash map string u64. So we change the function type. This Japan travel rating is a hash map. So we need to uh, change our return the type at the top because we are, we've been returning vectors. Now we're returning a hash map. Let's put it hash map string u64. Let's comment this out to not get this warning telling us that we are not using a variable. Okay. Let's go to the terminal. Now we are ready. Run this. Nice. Okay, what did I do here? Expected one of takes two distinct arguments. Change the closure to accept a tuple. Okay, this here I made a mistake because I didn't put a year and rate in the tuple, and here the vector shouldn't be shouldn't be after the function, but should be in between the parenthesis and the function name and here I need to put it to a tuple okay let's go fix that that's uh, some minor errors we can fix it where are we here map you see you have to put it in a tuple because we're using a hash map here this one here and that one in this side. Okay, and what else? Yes, this one. Let me move this. So I'm gonna copy it. Uh, where was it again? Between, yes, it's between the collect and the um, parenthesis so here if you want instead of putting an underscore you can just put um, the type it is going to return in the next example i'm going to try to put the type instead of putting underscore this is just to show you that rest automatically can uh, infer the type run what else okay semicolon now okay so uh, Japan travel rating. So because of the semicolon, it's creating an error also on the next variable. Let's put that semicolon. It's a long example. Okay, where is it? Here, there's a semicolon at the end because it's a variable that we're defining. It's an iteration, but inside the variable definition. Semicolon here also. Let me clear this first. Now it's going to be okay, I believe. Yes. So here we have the, the initial dictionary, the troublesome years, 2007, 2008. It's on the 50. And here we get the nice, the nice array that we want, 2014, 2005, and 2024. Okay. You survived this example i think it's time to give you the chance also you can take maybe a break here for you to open the fridge a little bit bring some food 
after we're gonna jump to the next example which is not gonna be a headache because I'm already tired of this uh, huge example please like and subscribe last way with uh, copied could use also dot clone but we're gonna use copied the last way Copied. I am tired <laughs> of the previous example. Because I'm tired because of the previous example. But uh, let's keep going here. Therefore, this one, it's going to be more light. It's going to be lighter. Okay. Let Tokyo Sky 3 visitors count. We're gonna go back into a vector, vect from, and we're gonna be building this vector with an array inside. And we put our values, let's format it a bit, push it here. That's okay, just do it like that, it's the same. Now you understand. So 21. Let's put some numbers in. 23, 87, 43, 98, 45, 109. Let's put a big number. 1,200. And 30. So this is done. Same process, you create a variable as you're using those functions and you're going to use your iterator on that variable, which is going to hold the result of it, even, even visitor count. So you see, it's a bit lazy, I'm using just uh, the event, the even uh, count. So Tokyo Sky 3 visitor count dot iter that iter still gets those uh, references. Now you know. But I can put a little comment anyway. Let's say you've skipped some parts. Get 1% of values. After that, filter even number. So filter here. Now you know we're going to use the lambda function. Let's call it like that. It's close. It's called closure rest. So the reference count, we use the count value of it. So we want the value because we want to do an operation on it, an evaluation if it is even. So modulo 2 equal to 0. After that, we uh, day reference, I uh, wrote fair reference. Okay, day reference and copies. So here we could have used clone at this step, but we use another one, which is copied. And after here, we collect into a vector. And here, this time for this vector, I'm going to put a not gonna let rust infer the type i'm gonna say it's a vector u64 so you've seen the the both ways of doing it the control way so putting it is better because uh, you can follow the logic if you have some bugs the compiler is so good 
So we use this notation before. Let Rust infer the type. But we can also resize it. The function name method collect. Now we know where to put it. <laughs> it is here. I'll have to put the parentheses. So here, just let me. Yes, double colon, vect. So there's something wrong here, but I'm going to fix it. Yes, vect u64. Now we can put our parentheses in the colon. So, even count. I'm going to copy it and return it. So it should be a vector u64. Let's close those comments. We iterate in through our variable. We filter in. Here you can play with this and do some different operations. Use and, use or. Copied. So let's just uh, put a little comment here. Could be. So I put here a root clone, but it's cloned, not clone. <laughs> okay, as I told you in the previous uh, example. So cloned, ed, not clone, which is okay for vectors. I close this. And uh, we're going to be returning a vect u64. So we're going to change the function uh, return type. We need to change function re return type to this vector u64. Let's get rid of this. Let's put our type and uh, we can go to the terminal now. Yes, I'm ready. Ah, yes, I need to close this. Let's check. Yes, there's all, all those comments. I always forget some. And uh, let me print it so that we're going to see the difference. So last print, took your sky tree visitors count, that's the highest store in uh, Tokyo, in Japan, I mean. Cargo run, nice compiler error. Loop ways, not found. Okay, so the return type here. I put vect u64, but uh, it's not well formatted. Just let me, let me go and fix it. That's why the function is uh, failing now. The main function can't find it. I just need to get rid of this and this. Now that's a vect u64. Let's run this. Okay. As usual, this I always do it. I forgot semicolon. Let's go to the semicolon. So it's on purpose that I'm not using a VS Code or all the stuff. I don't want to get uh, the automatic uh, suggestions. Okay, Tokyo Sky 3 visitor counts. And here we get the event numbers. We good. Congratulations. 
or the people who stayed uh, to the end. So you got the chance here to see three different types that we haven't used. And uh, I mean two. Vector, we've used it before. That hash map and the uh, arrays. In the explanation part, we have seen why they so special. We compared those with some kind of Python equivalents. And after we uh, explained different ways in uh, iterating, making those iterations using different techniques, different methods. And uh, now you, you should be fine with that. There might be more methods, but uh, I suggest you to then go and read the rest book. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Hope that you liked this video. Please uh, like and subscribe. And see you next time. For have a rest, have a rest session. <laughs>